Okay, great. Um, my name is Dr. Giti Javidi. I'm a, a new uh, professor in information technology at the College of Business, University of South Florida, Sarasota, Manatee. I moved here in August from, um, uh, from Virginia State University where I was a professor of computer science for, uh, for 12 years. Um, when I moved here um, uh, in August, uh, uh, because my, my background is obviously computer science and information technology, I have been a, um, I've, I've been an advocate of computer science education and information technology education. Uh, for teachers, for parents, and uh, for young people. Uh, we always talk about the need for having more uh, uh, students joining STEM, uh, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But in order to do that, we need to be able to train the workforce um, and the students who are qualified to get into those areas and who are interested to get into those areas. But in order to do that, we need to reach out to the teachers and it, it also starts from home. So we also need to reach out to the parents. So um, when uh, we moved here in uh, August, uh, we decided that uh, we did some research in terms of the need of the community and the need of the high schools uh, uh, for computer science um, and information technology teachers. And what we found out uh, was that just like any other state, in United States, uh, Florida is in a great need for computer science teachers in high schools. AP computer science are now um, accepted as uh, one of the courses that the students can take in order to graduate from high schools, but they don't have enough qualified computer science teachers. So we were fortunate enough to get a generous funding from Google uh, which is going to allow us to support um, uh, teachers for one year to train them to become AP computer science teachers. And uh, we are going to continue working with, with them. And these teachers, uh, you're going to meet them later. They're, they're the finest, brightest, most wonderful uh, teachers that you can meet. Uh, so we have a group of them in the room who are getting the trainers, a uh, training that they need, and eventually they are going to become trainers uh, to train teachers, other teachers, and uh, and obviously to uh, advocate for um, uh, computer science, AP computer science, in their schools and in the community. So our hope is that we are going to get the community so excited and so inspired in, uh, these, um, in this movement that uh, there is a need in the community and we have the brightest kids uh, in the, in the Minnesota, uh, Manatee and Sarasota community. And, uh, and by the way, I just learned that today, Minnesota, because we just moved here. <laughs> uh, the teachers keep telling me Minnesota and I'm like, what is that? Of course, it's a combination of Manatee and Sarasota. So we are hoping that we are going to increase the workforce, we are going to increase the, uh, the excitement among uh, the schools and parents and the community. And uh, USF obviously is taking the lead, uh, USF Sarasota Manatee is taking the lead on this, but without uh, the, the help of the community, without the help of the schools and the parents, uh, this cannot be done. Um, we are we are so grateful to the community. We are so grateful uh, to uh, USF um, Sarasota Manatee for, for uh, supporting us with this grant. And uh, we are very, very excited about the opportunity. Later on, you're going to meet the teachers. They came in uh, at the beginning of this week. And some of them knew nothing about uh, programming. And if you talk to them today, they have so far made uh, five or six apps. And uh, just today, they are completing an app in, to take the tour of the campus, which is so, so exciting. So we are so proud of them. It's going to run for a year. They are getting a one-week uh, workshop this summer, which is going to end tomorrow. 
And then uh, we are going to continue with them. They are going to have follow-up workshops during the year. Uh, also during the year, so we are going to meet them on Saturdays because they are, we know they are busy, they teach during the day. So on Saturdays, uh, we are going to meet with them for follow-up uh, meetings and, of course, follow-up workshops because it's impossible to be able to train the teachers in one week to become programmers. So we are going to have to continue with them. And uh, in, in addition to that, we are, um, we are, um, uh, we, we are going to visit their classrooms to see how they implement the, what they have learned in the classrooms, whether they are history teacher or English teacher or, or math teacher, you know, uh, there, there is always a way to implement programming and coding in your lesson plans. And app development is the best thing. You can teach the kids to develop apps while they are learning uh, about history, you know, and, uh, or, or English, or you know, grammar or whatever it is that, whatever topic we teach. So um, uh, in addition to that, so we are going to visit their classrooms and also we have, um, uh, they are going to have an opportunity to go to other schools and uh, observe other classes where AP computer science is being taught. Uh, in addition to that, we are creating a web page, which is a, uh, for Florida Community of Practice, where this web page is actually going to be a virtual community for teachers, not just the teachers who are in the program, for all teachers to come together and learn. Uh, we are going to share lesson plans. We are going to have discussion board. We are going to have blogs. They can share their lesson plans. And so we are going to create a virtual uh, community for, for them. The long-term goal is that uh, computer science would be offered in every school uh, in, the, in, the, in the district. Our goal is to reach out to all Florida uh, high school teachers and provide them the training. Our goal is to increase the number of uh, uh, students who go, to, uh, uh, who go to college to get into the field of computer science, information technology, or engineering. That's our ultimate goal. And again, uh, that's a national goal um, to, to increase the number of uh, the, the increase of workforce in a STEM. So that we want to be part of that. We want to make sure that the Florida is one of the states uh, that can reach that goal so that we have more and more kids who have the enough training or enough interest to get into. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe that there are uh, many kids in different communities who have no exposure to computing. They, ha they know nothing about programming. And uh, we, we feel that if we, can, uh, if we can train the teachers, and we can inspire the teachers, and if we can inspire the parents, and educate them about what these different fields are, not just engineering, but what can you do in, in, with engineering? Not just learn to programming, but uh, how, uh, how do you use it? What do you do with it? One of the one of our our criteria was not that you have to be have expertise in computer science. We want to get teachers who are English teachers and history teachers and those teachers who have um, may have an interest in technology but um, have no background in it. So when we did the application, we asked the teachers to. Uh, obviously, talk about themselves, which school they are teaching at, and what they are teaching, but a paragraph about why do you think we should select you to be in this program. This was a competitive program to get into. So the teachers that you're going to see in the room, they, they were actually selected to be in the program. It was based on what they said, and it is based on their vision. So they may not be uh, you know, proficient in technology today, but their hope was that eventually they wanted to be, you know, and they needed uh, support uh, from us and from the community to do that. So uh, it was, again, it was very selective. So you're going to see 
the teachers who are very, very qualified, all of them, to be in this program. Uh, we want um, to bring everybody on board uh, on the fact that there is a huge need in the country for STEM uh, workforce. Uh, we want to encourage uh, all the teachers, all the schools, parents, um, uh, that we all have to come together. We are all in this together. Uh, that uh, you have heard of the thing that it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to raise a talent. So uh, our hope is that even if we can reach out to one kid, uh, we've, done the, we've done the work. Uh, I also want the community to know that USF SM is the lead for this. Uh, anytime you need help, we are here to help. Uh, we are here to provide the training. Uh, but most importantly, there is a huge need in the nation there's a, and uh, Florida is no different, uh, but our goal is that we are all going to come together to train, uh, to, to uh, get the proper training and get all these kids excited about their future in technology. There's a huge need. By year 2020, there's going to be a shortage of $100,000 software engineers. There is going to be a huge shortage in cybersecurity. There's going to be a huge so a shortage in uh, um, information, uh, um, internet of things, in uh, data science. So who is going to fill up those jobs? My name is Ryan Kinzer. I am an uh, instructional technologist at the Out of Door Academy in Sarasota. I'm also an MIT master trainer in mobile educational computing. So I'm here because of Google's CS for HS, that's Computer Science for High School grant program. And what we're doing is training teachers in the Sarasota Manatee area in uh, computer science principles, getting them ready to teach computer science there's a great shortage of qualified K through 12 computer science teachers, and we're trying to, to make more of them right here. Well, we have a diverse group of teachers, and very few of them have a computer science background. So that's what we want. We want to show teachers that anybody can do this. Uh, I'm myself a former English teacher. So we're starting with the, the principles. How, how do computer scientists think? and introducing a block-based language. It's a drag-and-drop language called App Inventor. And App Inventor was co-developed with Google and MIT, and it's an entry point for those who want to learn to code. You can build some very powerful mobile applications for Android with it, and that's the language we're using here with the teachers to show them this is possible, you can be creative, it's fun, and you can build some powerful things in, in very little time. We want to model fun activities for teachers because uh, it's not going to be engaging for students if they're just sitting in front of a computer typing code all day. Uh, we want to be aware of how students learn. They, uh, they need to get up. They need to get oxygen flowing to the brain. They need to see that this is a fun thing to do. So uh, I, I've put in some, you know, some intentional breaks to, to get rid of that monotony and, and get people having fun and moving. It sparks their creativity, it gives them energy, and it makes sure they can come back with, uh, with fresh mind, fresh eyes to the code. So, for example, we've done some improv, you know, tossing a beach ball around, continuing stories. Um, we have played music and, um, you know, looked at different games. Today we're playing Would You Rather. Uh, I've sent the teachers on scavenger hunts around the campus to get them moving and get them thinking about their environment. Um, Keeping it fun, keeping it lighthearted uh, to, to counter the, the difficult material. The games and the breaks are designed to promote collaboration, first of all. So we're here to create a community of learners. Uh, you know, one of the central themes of this training is that coding is not a solitary activity. Uh, we're, we're creating teams of people who can innovate together. So that's one reason for all the activities. Uh, another way it translates into critical thinking is we're asking teachers to think in different ways throughout the training. They're not just laser focused on writing code. Uh, they may have to, the improv for example, requires them to ad lib, to think creatively and on their feet. That's a very key skill when you're facing uh, mobile app development. There is definitely a, a mindset when teachers arrive, especially if they have no computer science background, 
that this is hard. It's inaccessible. I can't do this. And we, we often realize that students will have the same, uh, the same sort of stigma. So on day one, before we ever write a line of code, it's important to change that mindset, give them a growth mindset that uh, not only will you fail, but you'll spend most of your time in failure, and we celebrate that. We look for examples of errors that we can celebrate. Um, we fail early, we fail often to succeed later, and that, that methodology, it's a startup mentality that pervades this entire training. We believe that great ideas come from anywhere. Uh, the more diverse the group of people, the, the better quality and the better quantity of ideas we'll have. So that's not only encouraged, it's required. It's, um, it's an example of what we see in our classrooms, what we want to see. And really what we want to see in this program is teachers able to go back to their classrooms and say, no matter who you are, you can do this. You can be super creative and solve some really pressing problems. Uh, you know, this is kind of our Sputnik era. We need more people to do this. Well, we're gonna promote what we're doing. Uh, we're gonna seek out partnerships. More importantly, we're gonna seek out real world opportunities for students to create. That's what the hackathon was. It put students in collaborative teams with local experts. Um, we teachers are the experts in the classroom, but how much more powerful is it when people who are doing this on a daily basis come and mentor our students? Sarasota is a perfect breeding ground for that. We're a combination of art and technology, great school presence with universities. Uh, we're gonna keep looking for those opportunities. I want them to know that everybody can do it. Not only can everybody do it, but it is a fun, engaging, exciting type of a learning. It's project-based, it gets you out in the real world and it connects students to things that they really wanna solve. And as a learning opportunity, what's better than that? Uh, it's been a great experience. Um, I came in thinking there was going to be a lot more to learn about Google, and it's just app-based assignments right now. Um, and so I think I can take this back, and I've learned about codes, how to create apps, and that's something that I can teach my students. They'll learn something about computers as well as applying that to the Spanish language, the Spanish um, class that they have right now. The codes uh, develop different apps. Um, some are games. We've learned about games. We've learned about um, walking tours. And like I said, I'll apply this to do projects with my students. It'll take a long time, but since we're IB, we have a little bit more um, room to move in different directions. We don't have to stick to one chapter or one unit. So it'll take them a long time, a couple of months to learn this probably and apply it. Um, it's going to make me grow as a teacher. We're always learning. Um, it's, we never stop learning. It's, it's a lifelong learning process as a teacher. So anything that I can get into, I take advantage of. Anything that I can continue um, moving forward, whether it's Spanish or computer science, um, I'm going to take advantage of it. We're always learning, finding different ways to um, teach our students, to expose them to the, you know, just technology, the new world. It's something that we never stop. We just continue learning different things, whether, again, it's computer science, and I can apply it to my area. I want them to be exposed to this. I want them to um, take advantage, um, help their children move forward with these computer science courses. Um, it's something that they're not aware of, and that's why I, as a um, Latin, Latina, I need to expose them to this and get them interested, especially girls. We need to get those girls interested in doing things like this, too knowing that there's more than just what they see at home. We need to expose them to everything in the world. It's not just here in the United States, but they can move on to Latin America also and use it there. I love this because my background is in engineering. So I understand why some kids may be afraid of getting into it because of the taboo subjects of tech, math especially. So when I founded Fungication, it was based on the premise that we were going to have fun doing this and kind of do kind of an educational espionage and sneak the education up on the kids while they were having a good time in the hopes that they would be exposed, engaged, and inspired to get into the STEAM fields. But I need more knowledge based myself, you know, and then finding ways to turn that knowledge into a fun way for kids to learn. And this is where the jobs are going to be. This is the need we need to fill in the future, is in tech, in engineering. And I want to be a part of that. 
Well, I think we have to look full circle, and full circle definitely involves the parents. And for the parents, it's showing them the job opportunities for their, I think for every parent, what's most important is making sure their child is okay, especially once they leave the home. And okay means being able to take care of themselves. And being able to take care of yourself means being able to put a roof over your head, eat, you know, have a vehicle that works and such, and that does take money. And so you have to start, you know, teaching our kids, well, where are you going to, what type of car do you want to drive when you grow up? Do you want to be in a house or an apartment? How much is that going to cost? How are you going to pay for it? And then showing them, I encourage parents all the time to go on the job websites like Indeed, um, Monster is one of the classic ones. Um, I don't know if they're using it anymore. But, um, and seeing that, you know, these are six-figure jobs, guaranteed, and then some and also through STEAM education, preparing them for jobs that haven't even been created yet. But what these parents, we have to show these parents that they're giving their kids opportunities so that they can take care of themselves once they leave the nest. I think what's most amazing about it is that you can do it. I can do it coming from another field. Yes, it was engineering, but it wasn't tech. So if I can do it, anyone can do it that's willing to do it, that's maybe just has a curiosity for it, and so that's one of the things I want to make sure kids know. Don't ever be afraid to try something. You know, go in there, let your curiosity, let your passion, um, let your ambition lead you to go in and learn these things. So I'm learning what's called coding. And I know everybody hears coding. You hear, oh, you got to teach your kids to code. Go code. You want to learn to code? But what is it? It's the equivalent of speaking another language. You are speaking the language of tech. Okay, and that is, that is a gift, that is a talent, that is a privilege. So to get a chance to do that and to be in that, I think is absolutely amazing. In a nutshell, USF is filling a need that we need in this community to make sure we get our kids learning 21st century skills, which includes speaking the language of technology speaking the language of computer science in order for them to move forward and be successful in their own lives and then to also help us be successful and thrive as a society. So please pay attention because USF is doing big things and you should definitely want to try to be a part of it. This is an incredibly exciting program for us because it connects us with the community, which is something that we want to do in every aspect of what we do. But this program in particular, in particular, connects us with teachers, brings in 20 teachers now to learn how they can take technology into the classroom. So this is a teaching program for teachers, and the teachers can then translate it back to their students. This is now becoming very important for high school kids. They haven't, they know how to do computers, but they don't really know how to do all of the technology that goes with it so very very good program and we have an ideal person to do it well I all universities need to be connected to their communities in virtually every single program that they have and we try to do outreach all the way from K through 12 through the business community through economic development community because this is what we do this is how we contribute and this is what we can do whether our research takes us out in terms of economic development or whether our teaching takes us out into the high schools into the schools all of the kinds of things we do we really work very hard to be a community engaged university and I I think most universities feel that way now. It's paying back for the taxpayers investing in us. If you look at our library, our library is contemporary today. It's called Information Commons, and much of it is online. Almost everything is online. We teach 50% of our classes online. So compute, commute, let me try that again. So computing and all the things we do in IT are very important. If you look at our hospitality school, you mentioned that it's important to have IT there. We have a, a program called the M3 lab, which is providing, or the M3 program. It's, a, it's actually a center, the M3 center, and that is a, a IT program for hospitality that connects us all over the world with that. If you look at our College of Business, the IT program in the College of Business is there. And cybersecurity, cuts across all of our colleges right now. In fact, this afternoon, in fact, when I'm finished here, I am going to be going up to Tampa where we're going to be working together with all of the schools in the USF system to design an undergraduate cybersecurity program. And we're taking our cybersecurity out into Lakewood Ranch. We're 
plans are underway to build something that connects with them. So cybersecurity, as you know, is a big deal in every single discipline, whether you start out in engineering, go to computer science, or go to business. It cuts across everywhere, as we see in the newspaper every day. When I came, we were in sort of a hiatus where we did not have somebody running the research program. But the first thing I did was look at all the faculty CVs and see the talent that we have here. We have incredible faculty who are very well prepared in research. Many of them have gotten research grants in their past. Many of them have written books. Most of them have published. Uh, and they're all anxious to do research. And so we have now brought in someone who's running the research office and we are developing a number of workshop stimulating programs. And I would say, looking at the data that just came in today, we are in the process of preparing somewhere between 20 and 30 grants to go out from our faculty. And this is bringing in resources that help us build better programs for our students and getting our students involved in research and then spinning off that research whether it's scientific or whether it's IT, whether it's books, whether it's in hospitality, but anything that continues building these areas and building careers and helping our students. We have a wonderful showcase of our students every year where they showcase the kind of research that they do with the faculty. So research is very, very important here. We want this to be a front door for you know, the university, we want the university to be a front door to the community. It's very hard sometimes for community to get into the university. There's somewhat intimidation of how you get in. And so our goal is to continually reach out to the community with programs, with things that make a difference, with ways that we can connect with children, with youth, with businesses, with professional people. We want this to be their hometown university, their local university that can meet all the kinds of needs that they have for growing. So we're hoping people can get, so we can get better known, so people can get to know us and come in and see that this is a wonderful place for them to be and we want to be their university. Hi, my name is Katie Schunk. I'm an instructional technology specialist with Sarasota County School District. And I'm here participating in this computer science for high school teacher program um, so that I can see how collaboration across the county can continue. It's great to see computer science kind of coming to the forefront of discussion. Um, since the state has now passed computer science standards, it's important that we have programs like this to develop collaborations and encourage um, curriculum development for the district and for districts across the United States. So far I've been working with the uh, MIT App Inventor, which I've previously worked with students to use over the years. And so um, during this program I've just been kind of learning how we can foster coll a collaborative community for computer science. So while some of the information that I'm learning in computer science isn't new to me, the actual experience and being able to form a collaborative group has been an Im important part of this week. Well, the district has definitely been looking at how we can roll out computer science standards across the district. So just being able to have a group of teachers who I feel confident in um, and be able to work with further while we're developing um, computer science programs, I think is a great, a great thing. So we are using MIT's App Inventor 2 to be able to um, design and code uh, Android apps. So what we're doing is we are using um, drag and drop programming, um, essentially snapping together blocks of code, which on the back end are Java, and then we can download these apps to our phones. Um, the primary purpose of us using these, or learning how to use MIT's App Inventor, is to learn how we can use this with students and be able to take this back. It's really neat because um, in, the, in the class with me, there's a math teacher and she's looking at how she can use some of the code in her math class. And sitting next to me, there's an English teacher and she's looking at how um, the actual coding language can help her students understand things like prepositional phrases. And it's just really neat to see how we could incorporate this into all subjects and not just um, computer science. I think it's just important that parents understand that students need to produce and actually create as much as they consume. Students go home and frequently they're just sitting in front of the TV or sitting in front of the computer playing games, but in addition to just playing games, students can become creators of the games and actually want to push themselves to develop things. 
um, USF has really brought this, or USF Sarasota Manatee has really brought this to our attention in Sarasota. They're trying to put us on the map and help us make great programs across the district. And I think that that's incredible that they did that for us. Well, hey, um, I'm Dajay Ostry, uh, current third year uh, new college student, um, peer mentor um, with Multicultural Health, as well as a Multicultural Health Institute scholar. Um, and I'm here at this USF uh, Google sponsored program to teach, um, to learn how to teach uh, kids um, my age or younger computer science. Um, specifically, uh, this program I thought was really um, interesting, important in this community because um, the, just the dearth of it in the community. Um, and it's really important because like minority students don't really understand like the opportunities that are available to them um, in the field of computer science. So like um, I'm learning how to write apps with everybody else around here and um, I'm learning I'm learning a lot. It's really, really fun. Um, I, I know yesterday uh, what we did um, was walk around the USF, man, um, USF Sarasota County um, USF Sarasota campus um, and just uh, took some pictures of um, some like landmarks around in the area and um, what we did was um, put it together in this app um, that's going to ultimately uh, serve as a guide um, and like you'd hit the button uh, so far um, what we did with this is like we'd hit the button and it randomize and pop things up right um, here is the code that we've been writing um, for an hour or two um, it looks really involved, but um, it's not that complicated ultimately. Yeah, what we have here, right, we have um, a text button that um, we'll push and I'll show you in a minute. Um, we have um, the labeling for like the layout and how it'll look. Um, we have a map there to uh, serve as a guide. Um, at this point in, the, um, in our design, we didn't have the um, map like what do you call it, uh, correspond to the actual area, but we're actually working on that right now. Um, then we have like a label for the actual area, um, like the USF, Man um, USF Sarasota. Um, and then we have uh, the, the pictures that we took yesterday that we're recycling through. I chose to start with three, because you know, we're, we're at the prototype stages. Um, and then this is the blocking for it, so we make sure that we have everything correspond to what it actually does, right? Um, so, here, the canvas touch. When you touch the canvas, um, it, it resets the view so that all of the um, all the items that you saw before pop up. Um, we have the screen one initialize that make sure that um, the things that we saw um, uh, come up when the screen is initialized when all the pixels come together at first. Um, we have the switch to landmark view. This stuff is supposed to simplify other things um, as they um, happen. Right. This is a procedure. Um, this is a procedure block. Right. Um, and we take that. And this is supposed to come here. So all of this happens when we come here. It simplifies things. So what I could do instead is uh, right click this and collapse. And then all of this is just goes right here. And you got you to initialize and make sure it, it, it kind of, it, it, it makes like a lot of uh, bare bones and, and um, it's almost like a contraction, right? Like when you say if um, is not, when you want to say like isn't, that's what that is, you know? And it'll shorten your sense and it'll make things a little bit more, more fluid. Languages, um, this is another language, so um, this is one way of, you know, customizing your own language. Um, really, it's just about um, sitting down, what are, what are the ultimate questions we ask? It's like, what do we want to do it? And then how, we get, how do we get the computer to, um, to uh, say, or how do we tell the computer to do what we want to do? Um, and there, are, like right here with um, MIT App Inventor, it allows us to, um, allows us to do it in um, a way that's um, simple. All it is is just um, understanding the basic terms and playing around with it, um, just using what you have. I want to have the tools in order to um, let folks know, like, well, actually, yeah, there's, there's a few different things. Um, one, I know uh, with an organization I'm affiliated with, uh, Million Hoodies um, West Florida, right now we're working on um, putting this, uh, what do you call it? We're working on tabulating the black and brown um, local businesses um, in the area, and um, at, by the end of this, I'm going to design an app in order um, for us, like as students, to have like at the touch of a button, like okay, this um, this kind of food is here, this kind of food is here, this kind of food is here, just to um, support lo um, our local businesses, especially um, in the black and brown areas, you know, um, as well as different, especially. Um, like coding at a very um, basic level is something that I feel that um, most of us should um, know and understand. We all use cell phones. Um, so, and it's also, uh, it's something that I, I wanna be able to uh, teach uh, those younger than me so they understand that um, this is a path at which they can take. There's a lot of money in this and there's a lot of scholarship in this. That's the biggest thing. I just want folks to understand that like you're black and brown, you're actually able to code. You know, if you need help, I can help you with that as well.
when it comes to say <laughs> when it comes to say like basketball or rapping right you see like I, I know there have been many in the spaces like I'm not a strong rapper I'm like an okay basketball player but like I've been crossed before like I, I've been I've been roasted before all that but at the same time you're in a, you're amongst your peers so it's okay to fail amongst your peers so um the biggest thing is like it's okay to fail it's like it's encouraged um to fail in, in a medium like this right but it's also um encouraged to fail in a medium like this when it's oh when, when there's a sense of community right um so um, what I hope to accomplish is to break the mold and um, to be, and like I'm not even the only one like that there's um, there's I, I'm blessed with um, the Million Hoodies West Florida members like a lot of them are um, very competent in computer science um, and like I love just being in the space because like um, even when I'm, I'm reading or studying and doing other things like um, as they're coding um, they're saying like oh I suck at this but like, hey I suck at this you know and just like they're picking each other up and they're excelling in whatever they do um, as black as black and brown women so it's like I, I love that I love seeing that and it's like I want others to see that as uh, much as possible to understand like yo like you can do this it just community and and peer mentorship is so crucial just um, getting past the stigma is just understanding that like um, there is a community for you here. There's space for you here. It's it's traditionally predominantly white and male. Um, so to break that mold and understand like it can be black and male, it can be black and female, it can be inclusive, it can be diverse. Um, it's all about that belief and um, just have people break that mold for you. You know, it's it's daunting. You know, it's intimidating. But just like um, somebody's got to take that step first, and I'm happy to do that. You know, I've done it so far. Okay. Um, my name is Ken Jacoby. I'm um, a teacher at Northport High School in Sarasota County. Uh, I teach engineering. And what brought me here was an opportunity to incorporate more coding and programming into my engineering curriculum. Um, it's something our school doesn't have right now. And this could be a way to not only put this into my own curriculum to give them a little bit of insight into coding, which I'm trying to do, but this will give me the tools and background to give it, uh, do a little bit better job getting the kids started and hopefully introducing a computer science track within our school. This app is new for me. Um, I have done coding before. Um, I've done some C++ coding. This is a little bit different. It's event driven. Um, you can pick different components and then start to build what each of those components is going to do rather than writing every single line of code as text. Um, the advantage is it makes it much easier and faster to get started. The logic is still there. So the students still need to go through that same problem solving and logical planning of how to build an application but it's a lot easier as far as them having to learn how to put that to code the, together. To the, syntax. the syntax, yes. Okay. So I think giving them something that will make it easier for them to, to build that syntax and see success will keep them interested and keep them progressing. The type of code uh, from App Inventor is when an event happens in the application, such as you touch the screen, then something will, it'll do something. So you take those events and then you program what's going to happen. So I touch the screen, it'll change the background picture, or it'll give you a menu with a list, and then I can pick from that list and it'll do something else, or it'll prompt up a quiz. I can see the question and it'll show me answers, and I can pick from that to choose you know, my answer choices. Excellent. It's a great opportunity for our students, especially in this area. In Sarasota and where I'm teaching down in Northport, there's not a lot of big industry. Our kids come and they get a great education. We teach them engineering. We teach them computer science. They go off to school. And many of the things they go off to school for, there's no opportunities to come back to this area for careers. Computer science is one of the areas that they can come back here. 
they can start their own business, they can create their own applications, and they can do that in a room with a computer, a, a phone, a couple devices, and internet access. So it's in giving our students something that they can do and they can achieve and be very successful for and be able to do it in the area, in this area so where they come from. Absolutely. Um, this is something kids, I do it in my own classroom with my own kids. They're already working with local businesses and local entrepreneurs to help develop. We do it in, with 3D modeling and 3D design, 3D printing. We can do that same um, opportunity with the computer science and programming. Local businesses, there are apps that would help their business. The students having this kind of background in the course we're learning here can then create those apps and start their own little business. It's, it's a great opportunity and I just like to see this continue. I know it's a year long plan um, for us to continue to stay together and continue to work to grow this and you know I hope to see this really grow in our own schools and for our own students. The Google Grant is a very exciting opportunity for our computer science faculty to work with our teachers through the partnership with Sarasota, um, Sarasota County Schools. And they have recruited a number of teachers to walk through a program and they're learning to code. They're doing wonderful um, projects throughout the campus. Just earlier this week, we ran into some teachers on a scavenger hunt looking for binary code in the hallways. It has been an exciting time to be here at Sarasota Manatee. The um, people resources invested in strengthening our cyber technology is not exclusive to education, but also counterterrorism as well as cyber technology partnerships at Lakewood Ranch. And our faculty, I'm proud to say, from many different disciplines, including the College of Business, are investing their time and energy in programs, developing grants and projects relative to student success in cyber technology and partnering with USF Tampa's Cyber Technology Center. Well, as a part of the USF system, we're very proud to be a part of the economic impact in the Tampa Bay area. But this, because we're building and evolving our research enterprise here at Sarasota Manatee, that economic impact will be throughout Sarasota Manatee as well. And it will also improve our community outreach to our partners in industry, as well as strengthen our ability to work with high school students, demystifying the college experience experience and helping them build bridges to come to college. Well, in general, in terms of education and training, there are two uh, important aspects. One is the hardest skills, the other one is the softer skills. Uh, obviously, by teaching them the kind of training that we are doing here, we are teaching them a lot about the hardest skills, but at the same time, we are trying to teach them some of the softer skills, as you mentioned, like critical thinking, uh, teamwork, uh, ethics, uh, these are some of the issues that we are also tackling on the side, uh, but not directly. Well, the USF Sarasota Manity has been very supportive of this grant and, and other activities that we have done in, in that regard. Uh, they have dedicated the entire staff and faculty and, and facilities and, and services to us to, to make this work. This is uh, the first type grant of this kind in this area, so we are getting all the support we need to, to make it visible and uh, uh, big, make a big noise in the, in the society. Well, the takeaway is to, first of all, the uh, softer skills and the uh, harder skills that we are teaching them and be uh, um, trained enough to, to be able to carry it over to the students in high school. Uh, but at the same time, we would like them to get back to us for any problems they have or for, it, for any other needs that they have in the future so that we could be in direct contact with high schools uh, so that we could do a good job training the uh, professional cater of uh, you know, technical and, and innovative people that we need for the future.
Well, we just want to thank METV for their support and uh, reporting this to the community. We are hoping that whoever uh, who sees this, uh, act, these type of activities that we do here, that they uh, come to us and tell us what their needs are. And uh, we have a, a good uh, set of people here that, that, and professionals here that can help us uh, basically uh, fulfill all your needs and uh, meet your uh, professional and uh, uh, technical needs in terms of uh, your future jobs. Well, this program has been really great. Um, programming is such a daunting task just to sit down in front of a block of code and figure out what's going on that this program is a lot more um, visual. It has this great color coding that lets us see exactly how the pieces fit together and it's really fun to do these little tiny programs for a mobile device so that students can actually see some progress right away rather than having to do a whole bunch of code and then compile it and then figure out if it works or not. I, I'll tell you I had a really interesting moment um, on Tuesday that we were looking at if-then statements for creating our code and as a ninth grade English teacher one of the things that my students struggle with a lot is grammatical structures such as prepositional phrases and dependent clauses and it turns out that these code blocks use those same grammatical structures to build the code and to build the events and so one of the things that I'm going to try with this program is to see if I can get programming into our English class into our grammar studies to try and help them understand better how these grammatical structures work. Well, it's really interesting because our students are constantly exposed to technology. They all have the phones, they have the smartwatches, they have the laptops. We use the laptops at school, but they don't understand how these devices work. They don't understand what goes into programs that they use. They don't understand even what makes the device power on or makes the sound go up and down. And so even something as simple as, okay, everything that your cell phone does is little ones and zeros. It's either on or it's off. And those combinations, that goes into making things happen. That's one more step toward them understanding how the cell phone works. And so hopefully, rather than me having to walk them through, okay, here's how we reset it, or here's how you're gonna do this particular task with what you're doing, they can start to understand the actual workings of it, and they can start to use their critical thinking and figure it out for themselves. I would say to parents that, like so many things for students, um, we need to moderate. You know, we don't want our students to just be on their phones all the time, but there are a lot of really fun programs out there and websites out there where students can learn about how technology works without feeling like they're learning it. App Inventor is one opportunity. There's lots of other ones as well. Um, and so just remember that leisure time is great. We want our students to have some time to unwind and relax, but they can also be learning in some of that leisure time in a fun way such as programming. So we're very excited to partner with Google in this uh, endeavor. Uh, one of the things about University of South Florida Sarasota Manatee is that we have a world-class faculty who are engaged in cutting-edge research. And one of the areas in which we do research is in technology, information technology specifically. And so it's a natural outgrowth of our efforts to have this uh, available to our partners here in the local community. So one of the benefits of having an active research university here in the local Sarasota Manatee community is that we are in actively involved in problem solving, engaging in helping solve problems that our community may have. And so having community members come to us and share what it is that they are working on and our researchers can come alongside them and help them solve some real world problems. So a university is engaged in adding knowledge to the human storehouse of knowledge is the way we talk about it. The idea is we know a certain amount of knowledge as a society, as a humanity, and what researchers do is that they go and discover more knowledge. So before uh, we knew how planes flew, somebody had to begin doing that research and understand the principles of aerodynamics. Well, in the same way, as we're learning how to bring in information technology into the classroom, researchers help us understand how to do that most effectively. 
Sure, so science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, often called STEM, are the high-tech fields, if you will, and they're critical shortage areas for our nation. So it's really important that we have a generation of graduates who are trained in the sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And here at uh, the University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee, we're involved in all four of those areas. Thank you.